Okay. Um, since we have a new version of Adobe Camera Raw, but a lot of my information about Adobe Camera Raw is in this older Camera Raw version 10. Um, and this is the way the old one looks. And there's a lot of the like little buttons for tools are up in the upper left hand corner. And in the new version, which is here, version 12, all of those have been moved over to this side. So that's one thing that'll help. The other thing is like the general adjustments window um, that were here as tabs, like all these different little tabs were different adjustments you could make to your images. Um, those have been all housed. They're, they're, they, they have like an official button now. And that button is this top button right here where it says edit. And when you click on that, all of those will show up. And so you have basic, curve, detail, color mixer, split toning. And so um, now you have, instead of icons for these different uh, tools, you just, you have the words. Um, whereas before we had these little icons. So this was like basic tab um, and you see exposure, contrast, highlight. And you'll see over here under basic, you have you know exposure, contrast, highlight and so forth. And so this is kind of the, um, the relationship between camera raw 10 and where things are found in camera and camera raw version 12. So just be aware of that. Another thing that's helpful is um, as far as these tools, if you hover over them, they will um, give you a little uh, information about what they're called. So if this, for example, is the crop tool. And when you click on it, then you get a different set of subsets of tools. You notice here under the crop tool, you have rotate and flip. Just a quick uh, handy thing. You can also know quick keys, right or R is right. So if you do, then it'll rotate to the right. And if you use left, it'll rotate left um, for your image. So, and if you choose here, I've got three images loaded up into Adobe Camera Raw simultaneously. And if, so if I have them, if I click on one of them, you can see that it's outlined in white. But if I click, hold shift down and click the top one here, now all of them in between are highlighted. So if I hit my right, they all turn or hit my left, they all turn back. So just a little handy tip there. Um, most of the time, especially this week, we're just going to be in this editing window where we have all these different effects and we'll be learning about them. So just kind of, you're going to have to translate a bit. Um, and I apologize for that. Um, another just handy feature just to be aware of is the like kind of toggling on and off. So here I've got information. Um, yeah, I've made kind of these adjustments here in, in my image. Um, I don't know why all of these like values went away, but um, I've made adjustments you can see in my sliders here, uh, different numbers. And um, if I want to see what that looks like when it's off, I can click on the, um, I can click on, I can normally like any kind of change I've made, I can click on this little um, eyeball here. And if I hold on to it, it'll turn it on and off. It doesn't seem to be working right now, which is, I think, oh, I know what's going on. It's just because I did not have, because I had all three images open and that's why I was behaving a little bit weird. So let me open these guys back up and make some adjustments to these. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to this image anyway. And now you can see I have these adjustments, my basic tab, and there's a little eyeball icon. If I click on that, that will, and hold down my mouse, it will momentarily turn it off just so I can visually see what did I do? What, what did I start with? So this is useful. And if you've made um, adjustments in multiple of these, different um, or areas, like let's say I have a curve adjustment here, I could do the same thing when I open up. But if I wanna turn all of them off at the same time, I can come down here to this bar and you see this kind of like half filled out, half vacant um, box with a line down the middle. So if I click on that, that turns everything off. So I can see what I started with and then I click it again and it goes back to my current adjustments. So good for pre-visualization as well. Um, 
another thing to show you is the black and white mode because you're going to be working in that. Um, if I click black and white up here, then it turns, shifts my image over to black and white so I can edit in the basic tab um, accordingly and make all these adjustments. But one of the other handy things to know about is when I do that, as soon as I hit that black and white, I get a new tab down here called Black B&W Mixer. And B&W Mixer allows me to adjust how different colors translate into the grayscale values. So for example, like reds, if I, if, if I slide this, it's just gonna adjust things that are red. So in this scene, I probably have some good blues. So you can see like it's, it's really adjusting um, the way those translate. And so you can come through here and just intuitively kind of move things around. Some things like there's not a lot of greens here, so it doesn't really have much effect. Um, what Photoshop determines, red, orange, etc., the different colors, is not something that you can control. It's pre preordained, but you can see here like um, my son had an orange jacket on, so this really just, just controls that specifically because that was the only red orange thing. So uh, this can be very useful to you to, to as well as um, the, that. And if you want to turn the black and white mode off, you just click on the button at the top again, and it goes back. So um, the nice thing is it kind of remembers uh, what you were doing um, beforehand as well. So where you, where you were at, so to speak. Um, so that's um, how to do some black and white adjustments. L look at some of the other videos to talk about how to do, um, if you want to do split toning and add some tinting to your black and white images, you'll get some information there. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you is like, what if I want to um, synchronize my settings? I, I've made adjustments to this image, but I have these two images up. And um, what if I'd like to apply the same kind of settings to those? Well, if you, you have to do something, you have to click, you have to like hold down shift and you have to apply. And you have to start with the image you want the settings applied from. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna click on this image and then select all of them down. I'm gonna start with this image that I just translated to black and white. And I will hold down shift and click to these. And then what I need to do is I need to come, um, this is not behaving the way I wish it would. Um, there's supposed to be a little icon up here. Um, that's a synchronization icon and it's not popping up. Um, but I can right click or control click on a Mac um, and get a sub menu. And when I do that, I can go to something called sync settings and it's gonna open up this little window and these are all the possible adjustments that you can make for the most part in Adobe Camera Raw. And so you can choose which ones you want to have applied. So I would like, um, in this case, I sometimes the default is like a lot of them are on. So you can come in and you can get different presets of like what you'd like. And this is overwhelming at first, but I'm just gonna start with settings, um, which is actually, let's just start with basic. And then that you can see it's just going to have basic on. It's not going to have optics, geometry, etc. cetera. Um, uh, I might add the black and white mixer because I want to do that. And I want this profile selected at the top because I'd like to make them all black and white. So I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to come in and it's going to synchronize these images. Now it could be like this is a little overexposed, so I'd have to come back and make an adjustment here like this. Um, find a happy medium that I'm excited about. But you get the idea. Um, and when I'm done with this, um, I can I can click done and it'll take me back to uh, my bridge. And just so you understand, like how do you open, if I just have one image selected and I double click on it, it's my raw file format. It'll automatically take me into Adobe Camera Raw from Bridge. But here I've only have one image to work with. If I wanna work with um, a few images, I just need to select multiple images in Bridge. So I can select these by holding down the shift key and clicking 
two different places. And then I can um, double click on, on them and they'll all open up, okay? Um, and so you can see now I have my four images. And now you can hopefully also see this little icon, these icons that are popping up in my images. And I'd like to, I'd like to go back through that and just show you now that I've selected all of these, that I have a little icon up there on my mouse that kind of looks similar to the uh, adjustment icon that I have over here, but it's got a little uh, like kind of circulating arrow sign, which means the sync setting. So if I click on that, you'll get the synchronize box, but now you know two ways to get to it. So um, yeah, we will. So anyway, so I could, I could do that and now I've, I've adjusted these again. So um, the last thing I'd like to show you just uh, that's handy to remember is if I want to export these, these are all raw files. If I want to export these into JPEGs to turn them in for my assignment, um, the easiest way, you can do that through Bridge. We talked about how to do that through the image processor, and that is a fine way to do it. But you could also do it from within, for within Adobe Camera Raw. And you're going to see this icon here, um, which looks like a download icon. And it says convert and save selected images. Um, you can also select your images over here on the sidebar if you have multiple images and click that download icon and you're going to get a menu and which is a lot of choices here. It offers the possibility of renaming the document, um, what type of format you want, and we probably want um, J JPEG format, but you can see you have different choices. Um, what color space and depth, which is something we're not at yet, but it's, and then image sizing is going to be most important to you. So here, it's really nice. You can you can do a whole lot of resizing choices, height and width. Um, I like the long side. That means whatever. If it's a horizontal, it's going to be the the horizontal dimension. But if it's a vertical portrait orientation, it will be the the vertical uh, side. And you can say this is how many pixels I want that to be long, and it will resize it appropriately. So if I want to just switch it to sixteen hundred pixels, which is a good size. Um, you don't really need to worry about the resolution for, for this class, but you could adjust that for the default. And uh, you could keep on sharpening for screen. Um, you have a couple different choices there, but that's fine. And then you click, of course, at the very top is the destination. You want to pe be aware of, of that. Um, and you can rename these as you wish. Um, It'll have the document name by default, so it'll keep the same same names. Um, this doesn't have as many choices. You can see, for uh, it doesn't appear to be custom naming, but you can actually just delete this and say, um, you know, sign. You know, you could put your name like, oops, Stefan Petronic. And then I could put um, here, I could put an underscore. And then in this third box, I could do two digit serial number and it asks me what number I wanna begin with. And you can see the example at the top here, it shows you what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna get stuff on Patronic 01, 02, 03, and 04. So really powerful tool to save you some time having to do that yourself. And then uh, I'm gonna save it back to the same place where my files are, click save. Down at the bottom left, you'll be able to see um, it's processing the images. It'll show you what it's on. And then if I come back here into my uh, window for bridge, those are my original raw files, but probably down here under the S's, you'll see my step on Patronic one, two, three, and four. So. I know there's a lot of things happening in the Adobe Camera Raw window, but I hope that helps.